conversation's always been around like more shooting so maybe just like more um shooters i mean you got me but we can always add more um and then personally i'm such a culture kid and i think it is so key to a team so i think just bringing in like really great people who know exactly what needs to be done um in the st- in like again being able to get to that standard and doing it consistently and there are certain people who are like that so i think going to find those kind of players and then you probably know that izzy and dana yesterday were talking about like negativity on social media that they've gone through and my guess is it'll spark like a wider conversation around the league just with people dealing with this and I just wanted to ask you like what your experience has been on social media this season and then if you felt like you wanted to like limit it at all or just you know how it was for you yeah um it wasn't as bad for me but I also avoid social media like a lot I barely ever went on Twitter and if I ever saw anything I blocked it as the second I saw it um just to protect my own peace but that's like easier said than done because a lot of the time, like we need to be on social media as part of our brand. Um, I'm, I don't know. It's, it's so hard because it comes with like the landscape of this, like our job is so public. So everyone thinks they like get to like have an opinion on your life. Um, it's really unfortunate, but I do realize it's kind of part of like the growing of the game, but I just don't understand like any of like the hate and the racism and all the other stuff that comes along with it. Like I just, could never grasp that I can't imagine ever going on social media and saying that about anybody um but yeah I don't know it's so hard because it just I know it's going to come with like the growing of the game and people are watching us more but I feel for people who are just being attacked constantly just trying to do their job you know what we should do we should like have a day where like we go into other people's jobs and we go watch them like and watch them do their spreadsheet and be like, that's wrong, you know, and, like, just roast them just one day. Um, Yeah, just, like, real quick. I don't know. But I do realize it's part of a public job, and other jobs deal with this, too. So it sucks. It really does. Social media is tough. I turn off my notifications. I barely look. But I'm old. I don't know. I I know you were talking about, like, wanting to set standards from the beginning next year. Would you ever consider, like, standards around social media? Like, I don't know exactly what that would look like, but maybe, like, social media cleanse day before a game, or I I don't know, any, like, ideas like that. I mean, I think that's a great idea. Like, I think some people would love that, but then also, like, you have, like, the Angels and the Camilas who, like, need to be on social media for their brands. So it's hard. Like, I didn't grow up in that, like, where social media was, like, huge in that sense. And I truly don't care. Like, I don't want anything to do with it. But I realize, like, a lot of people make a lot of money off of it, and they have to do it. So that's hard. I don't know, but I'm all for it. And especially if it's affecting your mental health, like, don't do it. Just turn – I don't know. But I do – I realize it can affect your money, too. So what do I Well, Rachel, if you ever want to come, like, criticize us as we do our media jobs, you're welcome to. No, I don't. I don't want to. I really don't. I would never do that, but it'd be kind of, like, funny, right? Just for, like, a day. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. You're welcome. All right, we'll go Julia, then Andy. Hey, Rachel, how's it going? Hi, good, how are you? Good. Um, You, I wanted to go back to the consistency point a little bit. I'm just curious, do you feel like that is something that comes individually from players? Is it a coaching staff thing? Like, what do you think is kind of the source of where that might be coming from? I do think it's all of us. It definitely starts at the top. Like you, it really comes from the leaders of the group. You know, you got to have that from your coach, from your, for your GM and, and it trickles down from your captains and all that. So it really is a group thing. Um, but you, you want to see it from the jump, from your leaders right away. And, um, that's, what's going to happen next season from the start. No doubt. I have no doubt about it. And, um, like I said, that's why I look forward to it, but I think we all play a role in the consistency for sure, because we have to, You have to do the right things every day. You got to rep things the right way every day. That's how you get great at it. So we all have to do it. And then as someone coming into this offense, specifically midseason, you've played under different coaches throughout the WNBA. How do you think specifically with the issue that this offense had sometimes getting in motion and just kind of 
moving the ball, not getting stuck. How do you think this team addresses that in the off season to try to kind of start on a better foot with that next season? Yeah. I don't know if it will, like, if you're talking regarding, like, free agency, I don't know if that's what, do you mean in that sense? Both um, free agency and, and just, like, tactically maybe some things that Spoon could install leading into next Yeah, season. okay, yeah, like, there's always going to be plays, there's different ways you can go about it, like, there's different, like, sets that you can run that help keep the ball moving and going into next season like we always talk about like 0.5 basketball like you should only have the ball in your hands for 0.5 seconds before you make a decision um so I think just like continue to like integrate that into our offense but like I said like that's going to start in training camp mostly um obviously bringing in free agents who understand that concept and have a high IQ might be helpful um and then maybe skewing some of the the offensive sets could help with that um, but I truly think it's just going to come down to training camp and repping, moving the ball, and making the right reads and doing that every single day. Awesome. Thank you. Have a great off season. Thank you. We'll finish with Andy and Mike. So we'll go Andy. Hey, Rachel. How's it going? Good. How are you? I'm not too bad. Thanks for asking. <laughs> um, so looking back at your time this year, obviously you had time split between Connecticut and here. Uh, and looking back at your numbers, like your offensive numbers took a big jump up once you got to Chicago. Uh, and I was just curious if you thought there was any specific reason, whether it's like a, a strategic thing, a mental thing, something else going on on the court, off the court, that you think contributed to that uh, growth in your offensive output. Yeah, I would say I think I played more minutes. I had to have played more minutes. I think that helps. You did, yes. Uh, yeah, okay. Playing more minutes always helps. You know, you're on the court. You get into a groove. You get into a rhythm. I also think, like, my role here was a lot different. Um, Spoon kind of just let me rock out and just, like, shoot it whenever really I had like the ultimate green light and I had that in Connecticut but like I said my minutes were like inconsistent and um and the offense was different like I wasn't always even really an option I guess so here I felt like I was where I was getting stuff run for me so that was really fun um but I would say that was probably like the big contributing factor is just like my minutes and my role yeah, yeah, and uh, continue on with that. You know, you and I spoke midseason about when you first came to this guy and kind of how you're fitting with the locker room and this is an environment you want to be in. You know, with everything that went on towards the end of the year and you're one of the few returning players, I mean, is this still a locker room environment that you want to be in? It sure seems like it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I had a blast. I really enjoyed everybody. Like, the locker room was fun, and it wasn't like that wasn't like a huge issue for us or anything because, you know, you've everybody's been in locker rooms that aren't great and – that wasn't an issue for us. So um, I look forward to it. I look forward to the people who are coming back. Um, I'm excited to see who else is going to join us. And, uh, um, yeah, I mean, it's going to be fun. And no matter what, it's always going to be goofy and weird in there. So I look forward to it. That Can't sounded wait. not, not weird. I know what you meant. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Rachel. You're <laughs> welcome. And we'll end with Mike. Hey, Rachel, appreciate the time. Um, I was wondering for you, obviously, you've been a part of different organizations and you've been a part of playoff basketball. For this team specifically, obviously, you know, there's two first-round picks in 2025 and free agency is yet to be seen. But how close do you think this roster is from a culture perspective with T. Spoon and Jeff putting this team together uh, from playing uh, legitimate playoff basketball? I think we're really close. I think you got to see good glimpses of it, um, especially with how crazy the season was you still were able to see, like, really good moments of it. Um, once again, next year, we're probably going to be pretty young. Um, but, I mean, that's okay. It's like youth is going to be fun, and um, we're going to have a lot of talent. I think we're right there. Like I said, it's it's going to have to start in training camp. It's going to start right away. It's so hard to say because I don't know who's coming, and I don't know what it's going to look like, but I do know the people who are returning, and my conversations with Jeff and with Teaspoon, we're going to come in a certain way from the jump um and it's going to be really good and then my last one for you is you know this off season obviously you, you came into this situation knowing you just had the green light but what is something that you want to work on this off season specifically to add to your bag uh that we might not have seen in 2024 yeah man i could like roast myself and like give you a long list right now um but i really want to be able to show more of like my mid mid-range game like I feel like I used to do more of that and I kind of got away from it because I do love shooting threes so much um but I think I want to show my floaters I'm actually pretty good at floaters but I need to continue to work on it to have that confidence 
Um, so I want to be more of like, I wouldn't say a three layer score because I'm not getting to the rim like that. No. Um, but maybe one, maybe a little bit, but I really want to work on my mid range and show that and, um, ball handling and all that. Carly's killing me up there. <laughs> you just making me laugh. It's a comedy show in an next interview. I'm here for it, Rachel. <laughs> Thanks, Rachel. You're welcome. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Recording stopped.